We are back for battle number six of the Matcha Madness Challenge, round one. This is going to be a bit of a special battle for two reasons. First up, we actually have two Uji Hikari single cultivar matchas today. As you saw in the first battle, this is uh, completely random by chance, and in fact, and looking ahead, I happen to see that the next matcha in the series also happens to be an Uji Hikari. That's an interesting little grouping that happened there in the randomizer. The second reason that this is a bit of a special battle is that the Uji Hikari from Mayleaf was the first matcha I tasted where I wasn't immediately thrown off by how bitter it was. This was the first premium grade matcha that opened my eyes to what matcha could be. I try my best not to be influenced by this history, but I'm sure there's going to be a little bit of bias, uh, and it's just human nature. Nothing I can really do about that, the way this particular battle structure was worked out. Just wanted to be upfront about that. Also means I'm really looking forward to tasting two separate Uji Hikari matchas today. One other thing you'll see over here for the Mayleaf Uji Hikari. This is the tin that the matcha actually comes in. It's the stackable tins. Now this is the old version of their stackable tin. They have a new version out now. I didn't really care for this style tin for the matcha, so I actually bought one of the breakaway matcha containers and that's what I actually keep it in. So when you see me go and make the matcha, I will be taking it from this black container here and not opening this one here. It does come inside of this tin and then there is a, a sealed little baggie, plastic baggie inside of it with the actual matcha. My biggest issue was that you can see on the bottom here that little lip that just has a tendency to collect the matcha. It makes it very difficult to clean out uh, if you want to reuse these tins, which I highly recommend you do. For matcha storage, I just did not feel like it was a, a good solution. So I went ahead and bought the container from Breakaway Matcha. Okay, now I think I got all of the caveats, etc. out of the way, and we can get to brewing. See you in a minute. again. The Uji Hikari from Taste de Chopin is a little bit more vibrant green than the Mayleaf version, which could just be that this one has been open for a bit longer, and the bubbles seem a little bit finer, but uh, they both smell really great as I was whipping them up here with the aerator. Let's give them a, a sniff now that they've had a bit to settle down. Like fresh spring water and early pea shoots, like microgreens and the Mayleaf version. A little bit more going on in this one, a little bit more of that like cinnamony uh, note that I get in some of the matchas and yellow teas, but also that sweet spring water undertone. Very similar on the smell. I mean, again, they're the exact same cultivar, both from Uji. So it really comes down to the tea masters in this case to see how they were able to express this particular cultivar. It'll be very exciting. All right, let's try the first taste. Oh, okay. This one has more kind of asparagus notes, I would say, than what I'm used to in my memory from the Mayleaf version. Of course, I'll, I'll taste it here in a minute, but that kind of gentle nudge of a reminder of bitterness that I mentioned in uh, the last battle, battle number five there. Completely excellent Mayleaf version. And just goes to show you, the exact same cultivar from the exact same city, but two separate tea masters could produce, I won't say wildly different, but very noticeably different uh, matchas. This has a little bit more that woodsy quality of the asparagus that I mentioned uh, and also in the last battle. You really have to go searching if you're going to try and find bitterness in this this one. Whereas uh, this version, there's kind of that sideline reminder of bitterness. This one, you have to kind of look through the crowd and be like, oh, yeah, I guess bitter bitterness is here too. I didn't realize that. Whereas in this one, bitterness is kind of off on the side and always kind of reminding you, hey, I'm here. Well, this is tough. They're both really good. I know I said from the beginning that I'm kind of already pre-biased towards the Mayleaf Uji Hikari. So I'm trying to really keep that out of my mind, letting it cool down instead a little bit. This is tough. Okay, yeah, I did not see this coming. I'm actually gonna give it 
to the Taste de Japon. That was very unexpected. All right, I feel good about that. One of my favorite matchas getting knocked out in the first round. Did not see that one coming. Taking a minute here to pause and make sure I'm not just trying to overcompensate for my bias. So that's why I took a couple more sips afterwards. And uh, yeah, Tête de Japon, you get to move into round two with your Uji Hikari. About this May Leaf Matcha that really opened my eyes to the world of premium matchas, what do we know about it? One of my favorite things about May Leaf is how much information they give you on all of their teas. In this case, we're getting 30 grams in this super large uh, reusable stackable tin, which again, I wouldn't recommend for the actual matcha. I would recommend buying a separate container to store your matcha if possible. I mean, this is serviceable, it's not terrible, but I, I would prefer something more along the lines of the breakaway matchas. I would say it's probably better than these. These seem to be a very popular style and they come with that kind of pull away like uh, soup tin top, right? And then there's a mylar bag inside of it. It seems to be quite popular for storing matcha. Mayleaf is in the UK, so again, an international order. At the time, the conversion, I paid $37.36 for my 30 grams, which rings in at $1.25 for this particular matcha. Even though it's their premium matcha that they sell on Mayleaf, in this battle, it's actually one of the cheaper options that is available. Season, this comes from May 2018. Cultivar, obviously, the Uji Hikari, and Origin Uji Kyoto, Japan. The description from Mayleaf's website reads as follows. Tiny batch, 100% Uji Hikari cultivar matcha made by an Uji matcha family master. This is the absolute highest grade matcha available, and we adore it for its depth of flavor, creamy body, and velvety finish. This is a 30 gram tin of 100% Uji Hikari varietal ceremonial grade matcha made from hand-picked tencha which has been shaded for about a month before picking. The shading on these leaves has grown up to 90% by using three covers to almost entirely block out the sun just before harvesting. The leaves are stone ground using granite mills in a small family run factory in Uji which has been making award winning matcha for generations. The cup color is a vibrant, rich green, and the flavor is a deep umami and creamy with a perfect layering of bright green notes moving into a smooth, gliding finish. This is one for those really special matcha moments. Please be aware that we purchased the entire batch direct from the revered family of matcha makers of their top grade matcha. This tea is not available anywhere else worldwide. It is an extraordinary matcha. I've actually I bought quite a bit of it uh, because I was so enamored with it and I will continue to enjoy it. But for the Matcha Madness and in finding my ultimate matcha, it's gonna go the wayside. In a first round knockout, which makes our bracket look a little something like this. And with that, I think I will see you tomorrow for battle number seven of Matcha Madness. Enjoy.